Right, here everyone. So exciting time. It's time to start a new hydroelectric project and it's quite a big one. And it's going to be a cross flow turbine. I've wanted to build a cross flow turbine for a long time. I just haven't managed to find a project that suits it. So the turbine we're going to build and the system itself is 6.5 meters of head. And we're, the flow rate is actually massive, um, but we're going to try and use about 100 liters a second for a power output of around 2.5 to 3 kilowatts. And this power is going to power the whole property, it's quite a large property, uh, well, more than power it actually. Um, it's all electric heat pumped and all electric heating, and so it's going to power the whole lot. Currently, the customer has a really big electric bill. We're hoping to turn that into just a standing charge bill with no real usage because it will come off the turbine. So yeah, very excited about it. It's a pretty big project. Haven't built a cross flow turbine before, but you know, I've been going over a lot of designs. Um, the design itself, the turbine is not my design and I can't take credit for it. I actually found a CAD model online and I'm using that for the basis of my design. I am changing it quite a bit. Unfortunately, I can't credit the people that, that have designed it because I'm not actually sure who's designed it. It might be open source, I don't really know. Um, it's just all over on CAD websites. So I'm using that as a basis, but I'm changing it a lot because there's parts of it I don't like. The intake is something I'm going to build as well. Now, the intake itself, we have some um, design issues around the project as a whole because the customer actually started work on this. He had various hydroelectric companies come in and fail to do anything, go bust, charge him. He's had no luck whatsoever. Um, as a result, he just started um, doing stuff and the building itself is already there, so we can't change the building. And there's a dam in place, which has been in place since the 60s. And so we can't drill into it, drill through it, change it, do much with it. And so I have to design around the fact that we've got this building that's already there and a dam that's already in place that I can't do much to. So in this video, I'm going to be making the intake system. And the intake is a bit of a compromise because of the reasons just um, I went through. And so we're going to have to build an intake that's submerged with an air cleaning system, so an air burst that cleans it. And the um, because we can't drill through the dam itself, I've got to come up and over the dam. So the system's going to work on drawing a siphon. So that's what we're going to make in this video. And let's get to work.
Okay, that's the body tacked together. So good planning with ordering the flanges and stuff. Right size pipe meant that it's mostly just fitting together. I did have to cut these pipes down, which I did off camera, do the joint and stuff. Obviously there's a lot of welding to do, but yeah, quite quick. Yeah, so we won't tack that, won't weld that up, which leave it tacked. Wait for the filter element to arrive, which sticks out here. We can cut the end plates and we can do the air cleaning system. Yes, yeah, gonna be quite the beast of a thing. <laughs> a big intake. So you're probably wondering why, if I can't have any filter out this way, why I've put a flange on this end. Uh, there's a few reasons. First of all, uh, this pipe isn't that expensive. It's still very expensive, but the bend, if I'd have just put a 90 degree bend here and purchased the bend, that bend in this size pipe was uh, 1,100 pounds plus fat. So <laughs> it was a bit out of the question really. So I've put this flat piece of pipe on the join and I'm gonna end cap this. It also gives us some options for mounting it and stuff. So that's why one end's caps and the filter goes out one side. I would have liked the filter to come out equal both sides, but I can't because the limitations of the dam and where I can put it. And so it has to just come out one side and we'll have to bracket it or something. But yeah, that's why there's an end plate on here and this isn't just a curve because it was just too expensive. Yeah, hope that answers that. Next thing to do is work out the air cleaning system, which will go in here, connect to an air compressor, and blast air out into the element. All right, hey everyone. So about two months has passed since I started this. I've cut down this a little bit because it was a bit too long. It was going to sit in the wrong place. And this Coanda intake screen has arrived. Had this custom made. I'll show you a closer look in a minute. But this is basically the layout of the intake. Ideally, this would be on both sides, but we can't do that because of the uh, existing dam that's already there. We have to keep on to one side of it. So it comes out one side. As I explained before, we're just capping this side because it's cheaper than buying a curved fitting. Um, and so yeah, we need to do the air cleaning system. So there's gonna be an air intake in here which blasts air and cleans this because this sits underwater. So yeah, let me show you this filter. It's very nice, I'm very happy with it. So I'm gonna keep it wrapped up for now, but you get an idea. So this is a wedge wire spiral wound screen with these support rods. So this is triangular wire and with a 2 mil gap. The 2 mil gap is the maximum limit for within a certain distance of a tidal area um, to stop baby eels and fish. And so that's, uh, that's what's recommended basically. Yeah, really happy with it. It's pretty nice quality. Because it's a cross flow turbine, it doesn't need particularly good filtering like small debris can go through it no problem uh, the reason mostly for the filtering is to protect um, living things in the stream of which there aren't realistically there aren't going to be behind the dam where this is in front of the dam there definitely is trout uh, behind the dam the only thing there is is the pool and then it just goes up mountainous and so there's not really anything going to be anything in there but we protect them anyway goes in that way but it's not quite sitting straight yet so you just need a little bit more top and bottom right there we go that's what we want so that weld up lovely okay that was way more time consuming than I would have liked never mind right then so got this tube which I welded a bend on it and drilled a load of holes so mostly the holes are squirting air out the bottom because air is going to rise up and some out the sides but none on top because obviously it's going to go upwards. So this tube sits goes down through there. So obviously this is the bottom. Through there. Still hot from welding. 
like that. So that's it. Place to the bottom, holes down the side and holes on the bottom. So we get that welded in place, get the flange welded on there and then we need to do these end caps which hold this in the end as well. Right, I'm pretty much there with this now. Cap the end, holes in it, added a little support. All welded up, both sides. So it's just uh, final welding now. So just do an assembly, just to check everything. This is rigid now, rigid enough at least, for what it does. So then we'll have an end cap, like that. Then there's an end cap, this end. And it all fits, so yeah. It's all good, ready to do final welding, and then that's ready to go. Pleased with that. Might have overdone it, potentially, but you can't have an intake too big, realistically, because it's just going to get blocked up less. So yeah, happy with that. Right here, everyone. So I've received all the bolts and things in the post, and the intake is done and ready to go. I'll leave the wrapping on it for now. We've got to load it up, get it transported, and the air cleaning system is, is, is all in place, but we're not going to hook it up initially. We're just going to do some testers and stuff first. But yeah, she's all ready to go. So next job is to get that loaded up. Okay, so that's the intake complete. Happy with how it turned out. It's not a particularly difficult thing. Uh, the main bulk of it, obviously, I had to get made somewhere else because I can't. I'm not able to wind a wedge wire screen here. So uh, in the next video, which I'll be putting out immediately after this one, because this one's a bit, you know, it's not much to it. Um, we'll be making the cross flow turbine and that's quite a long video and quite in depth. OK, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and uh, go over and check out the cross flow turbine build video after this one. And once you've seen that one, we'll go and do the install. Then it get really interesting. All right. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.